So I'll go on to the my next presentation. If you are just for me. So my second talk is on a CHED. It's a decade of our work. So earlier we published an exclusively pediatric age group, 112. This work include all age group. I'll tell you why exactly we included that. Do not have any financial disclosure. Said we know bilaterally diffuse corneal clouding generally manifests immediately or at the birth and it progressively increases thickening and opacification. And as the time progresses, you have a lot of morphological changes. Initially at the Desmet's endothelial complex, you have an abnormal Desmet's membrane being deposited. That's what, you know, Desmet's gets thicker and thicker. You know, some of these cases have as thick as a 50 microns. Normal Desmet thickness is around 10 to 12 microns. And also as the chronicity increases, it also damages the Bowman's membrane. I'll come to some of the investigation. So traditionally, we used to look at, you know, tar slate evaluation, make a distinction, mild, moderate, and severe based on the high visibility of the high risk detail. So in the first, we don't have to do some time. In the second, certainly this case is for a DSEC. In a third case, because of degenerative panis, maybe a penetrating keratoplasty would give a much better outcome than a DSEC. Although DSEC is evolving, have been found to be, you know, much more advantageous. We were the first one to consistently demonstrate DSEC in a pediatric age group. Although, you know, DSEC has been really good in a, several aspects, but if you look at between the, these two images, you will never get a pristine clarity of a penetrating keratoplasty after a DSEC, meaning it is a big compromise straight up. Because it gives you all advantages of, you know, suture-less surgery, early recovery, much less risk of, you know, glaucoma, graptose dehiscence. But one of the biggest setback is a lack of corneal transparency. So for this, what we did is that we started analyzing this, you know, we started using what are new devices which we have. So not only what I did is that, you know, this is a traditional classification, mild, moderate and severe. We started using the morphometry and also densitometry. If you look at densitometry, it seems to be much more robust and a reliable marker of the disease than a OCT or a corneal thickness. So this also reflects, you have, as I said, you know, you have anterior basement membrane uh, fragmentation, Bowman's membrane fragmentation. So that clearly reflects, this is perhaps one of the important reason why these corneas tend to be much more easier and therefore, how do we address? And also the scatter plot actually showing the densitometry has a very narrowly placed, so it is a very robust measure compared to the CCT alone. So therefore, we proposed a new algorithm based on the uh, findings, meaning you have to do a clinical invest, you know, clinical photography. And if the child is cooperative between three to five years, I, I think that is the age group, you know, they can cooperate for this imaging. And based on a mild, moderate, and severe, we have a new algorithm. And most endothelial keratoplasty do well if we choose, you know, moderate cases, moderate to mild cases, not the severe cases. So you have again a mild, moderate, and severe. If you have a OCT changes, you know, I do not do DSEC. Some of these cases have an extremely good pristine clarity compared to that of a PK. Okay, so we try to avoid, you know, this is a case which is a 12-year-old child who had a DSEC. Apart from the corneal haze, can you see some striae's? This, we coined this term called as a Bowman's membrane striae. So this is uh, particularly appears, you know, because of folds in the Bowman's membrane. And some of these denser cases we've also combined with the my algorithm to begin with, younger tissue much more better endothelial reserve. So therefore, I wait at least three months, three years is the minimum age. Excellent study. Yeah. Did you have By any then, techniques? you know, child also cooperate, use little lamp. You don't have to take, you know, several time under anesthesia. They also cooperate you for all imaging. I think that is a good standard, you know, between three to five years, they also start to the formal education where child visual requirement or demands are much higher, that would also facilitate them. Any specific measures you take then to uh, improve the amblyopia after that? Anything specific? Yeah, I think three months, you know, we were able to refract. I gave them prompt refractive correction by three. 
and once child acclimatized to the glasses then i start doing alternate eye patching and we have a you know a plethora of applications apps you know visual stimulating apps i run them through the parents and also we have a rehabilitative facility so we'll try to you know stimulate and try to you know catch up you know the three years which you know child had lost so many things in all your cases you did the uh, stripping technique or the non stripping technique so, in all your cases did excellent. you excellent so uh, i couldn't show the video so what i do is uh, i make a side port inject the air bubble which will serve as a concave mirror and uh, it will show are there any gutty pigments any scar if i don't see anything in the visual axis i believe we should do a non desmet stripping the reason is desmet is very thicker and it is time consuming very tedious in the process you may injure lens iris okay and also most often so we dig inside we end up peeling the lot of posterior stromal fibers so almost 10 years ago i published that series you know desmet stripping versus non stripping so non stripping seems to be very very superior yeah and during the course of the surgery did you do any other technique to enhance the visibility like use light yes, pipe or yes channel yes, yes. channel your elimination and certain cases we also you know stain them if needed did any of the children need cataract surgery later on yes madam i think uh, 23% of these cases hmm. i believe you know following a simple trabeculectomy uncomplicated trabeculectomy we have a 5 year you know cataract formation i believe you know the cataract is the biggest risk i think you know nearly 1/4 of entire series had some form of a cataract possibly it could be combination of you know intraocular insult manipulations mm. and also long term use of steroid also i deliberately make an attempt by one and a half year we will wean them up as steroids but even then you know we had a nearly 23 to 25% of them had a and how did the graft behave after the cataract okay and i uh, so only about 12% of out of this 23 had a visually significant i generally do myself retinoscope and and see if there is a nodal point is obscured and uh, they tend to do well so far you know i was lucky didn't have any graft failure okay but this children you know we also do the specular just prior to the cataract surgery and take all necessary precautions since it is a this lens aspiration hmm. i believe we don't use a phaco energy i think uh, that actually one of the big advantage okay. your technique for insertion okay i use a sheets glide sheets glide uh, i recommend you know we should master one particular technique not to mix and match so that i'll avoid uh, you know putting acm ac maintainer and so on and you have one main tunnel one side port so no more ports thank you thank you dr